time and space. He lives in a spectrum of the universe. When he ventures beyond this limit, he is in the unknown, a realm where strange forces are brought into play. When man attempts to misuse these forces, he is sometimes destroyed. This is Macabre. The Far East Network presents, in special performance, Macabre. Tonight's story, Final Resting Place. doesn't look like the road. Honey, I think we're lost. It has to be right, Sue. Justice of the Peace back at Carterville said the lake was on the main highway. We haven't made any turns. But, darling, it's getting dark. This road doesn't look well-traveled. I really think we made a wrong turn somewhere. Mrs. Kent, your husband solemnly promises to deliver his bride of a few hours safely and surely to Honeymoon Lodge on Mirror Lake. Now, let's hear no more about it. Come on, move closer. Head on my shoulder. That's it. <laughs> Roger. You better watch the road. Why? We haven't passed another car for an hour. Relax, Sue. It's a fine way to start a married life of bliss. Look, there's a sign. Can you make it out? Yeah. Randolph, five miles. Uh, are we supposed to go this way? Sure. What I tell you, it's only 50 miles farther. Randolph is our halfway point. But this country road, how can they call a lonely trail like this a highway? <laughs> You're just a sophisticated city, I think. Now close your eyes and listen to the radio. We'll be there before you know it. All right, darling. I guess I'm getting jumpy. <laughs> Head on my shoulder and not another word. Okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Authorities of the state asylum have just issued the following warning. A dangerous homicidal maniac escaped custody this morning and is believed to be in the vicinity of Randolph. Roger. Shh, He's 45 years of age, weighs 200 pounds, has thick gray hair, and answers to the name of Dr. Vardmore. We repeat, this man is a dangerous killer. Those in the vicinity of Randolph are urged to take extra precaution tonight. Since this killer is armed, the public is warned against walking alone or driving at night on the quiet roads near Randolph. Report all suspicious persons to the county sheriff's office. Now we return you to Stars of Music. <gasps> Roger, did you hear that? Sure, but how does it concern us? Darling, we are driving down a country road near Randolph. Suppose we should have a car trouble or a flat tire. Oh, you are getting jumpy. Let's stop in Randolph for the night. But Sue, our reservations at Mirror Lake are for tonight. Roger. I have the strangest feeling. If we don't stop at Randolph, we'll never reach Mirror Lake. <laughs> Great idea, Sue. What, darling? Stopping here for the night. Now we can see the carnival. It's all right while these people are here, I, I guess. But we'd better go back to the hotel before they leave. Are you still afraid? Well, kind of. Aren't you? Nah. Come on. I'll show you a good time. You'll forget all about it. Okay. What's that man doing over there? And now, ladies and gentlemen... If you will kindly step closer, I don't know. Let's find I will out. demonstrate for you one of the great marvels of all time. As you see at my feet is a hole, an excavation six feet in depth, a grave, if you will. And beside me here is a casket. Now, friends, what do you think we are going to do? Now, friends, ladies and gentlemen, have no fear. Tonight, I, Professor Vincent, will select someone, one of you from the audience be hypnotized and placed in this casket. Then I will bury him alive for five days. If he's not buried that long, he ain't gonna wind up much alive. <laughs> Just a moment, please. Five days at one hundred dollars a day. Now what do you say? Who wants to make five hundred dollars? There is absolutely no danger. A shaft will be sunk 
so that we can see your head. You'll get plenty of light and air. Food will be lowered to you. Nothing to it at all. Who will be the first volunteer? You got it popular in Undertaker, pal. Come, come now, ladies and gentlemen. Under hypnosis, believe me, five days will seem like an hour. The easiest $500 you've ever made. Who will volunteer? How about you, my bumpkin comedian friend? No, sir, Ray. Last year I took sick with pneumonia. So I'm sure I end up in one of them boxes. Did you recover? It's hard to tell from looking at you. <laughs> you, sir, what is your name? Roger, he's pointing at you. I uh, don't think I'd be interested. Uh, who are you, sir? Roger Kent. Roger Kent. Does $500 interest you? Well, sure, but... Uh, Good. I... Good, you'll make a fine subject. Now, wait a minute. And, Roger, who is the young lady with you? My wife, Sue. Oh? And what do you say, Mrs. Kent? Why, I... I think it's just a dreadful idea. No. You better pick someone else, Professor. Nonsense. Do you need the money? We do need it. But not this way, Roger. It's awful. 500 bucks would pay off the car. We still have 10 days left for our honeymoon, Sue. Well, how about it, friends? Don't let him tempt you. I don't like that man. It is a lot of money for only five days. We can't wait all night. What do you say? I, uh... I... I don't know. Say no, Roger. Speak up. Yes or no. I hate to turn it down. You're not going to be buried in that terrible coffin. Tell him no. Go ahead, pal. We got a first-class cemetery. <laughs> All right. All right, everyone. Roger and Sue. Time's up. Tell you what I'll do. Think it over. If you decide to go through with it, come back after a couple of hours when the carnival is closed for the night. I'll be waiting for you in my trailer. Oh, Roger... He wants you. I'm afraid of that man. Don't forget. I'll wait up for you until you decide one way or the other. Roger Kent will hold the grave open for you. Listen, Sue, my mind's made up. But suppose... Face up to it. We need the money. That's the easiest 500 bucks I ever heard of. Darling, I know that. Then what's the matter? Well, in the first place, we shouldn't be out here in the dark with that madman loose. In the second place... Professor, Professor Vincent, Vincent seems, seems too interested in me. Oh, Roger, you read my mind. I'm just trying to protect you, honey. That man, I, I don't know that... Something wrong. Admit it, Sue. You don't like the Buried Alive Act. Isn't that it? Yes, yes, I guess so. It's horrible. I thought so. Uh oh. This must be his trailer. Professor Vincent. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Roger. Yeah? If he answers, there'll be no turning back. It'll be too late. I know. No turning back. Professor Vincent? Come in, Roger and Sue. Come in. Did you really think would come? I was certain. You see, there is no other way. When I count three, Roger, you will be asleep. Sound asleep on your feet. Then, Roger... You will be placed in the coffin and lowered into the grave for your five-day rest. Now look deeply into my eyes. Deeply. Inhale. And look deeply into my eyes. You're going to sleep, Roger. To sleep. You can no longer move your arms. They hang helpless at your side. Sleep, Roger. Close your eyes and sleep. One, two, your eyes are closed. And now you are powerless to open them. You are three, asleep. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to place Roger Kent in the casket. Whom among you in the audience will help me? I will, Professor. All right, my friend, step right up here now. Here, help me raise the lid of this coffin. Now, uh, give me his feet and we'll put him in. Careful, careful, he's a big man. There, there, he's in. Gosh, heavy as a rock. Just like a dead man. <clears throat> yes, now, now, close the lid. Close it. Now we're ready to lower into the grave. You see, the casket is supported over the open hole by two chains. If you'll flip that switch the same time I flip this one, Mr. Kent will be gently deposited in his grave. This one? Yes. There it goes. Glory be. Just like a real funeral. Reminds me of the time we buried my grandpappy. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a few moments, the coffin will lie at the bottom of the grave. We will then place an air shaft down to Mr. Kent's head so that he will be able to breathe. And all of you will be able to see him at 25 cents apiece. I don't know. I just don't know. Thank you, friend. You've done your work now. Will you kindly leave? Thank you. You are witnessing the marvel of the age. A human being being buried alive. The casket has stopped. Will another volunteer from the audience help me position the air shaft? How about me? Fine. Step up here, friend, if you please. You picked the right one this time, Governor. So? I used to work in a funeral parlor. Handle the stiff. Uh, yes, now. Now, just pick up that end of the metal shaft, please. Easy does it now. Down over the round opening on the casket lid. Careful now. There. Thank you very much, my friend. Neat, very neat. Okay, Governor. What next? Uh, the shovel. The hole must be covered up. Oh, sure. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. You have just seen demonstrated the marvel of the age. A man buried alive. Now, for the next five days, Roger Kent will lie there in a deep slumber. The end of which time we'll dig him up and pay him $500. In the meantime, my friends, you may step up here and view him down the shaft to a small sum of 25 cents, one quarter, the one-fourth part of a dollar. Ladies and gentlemen, who will be first among right. you? No, sir. What's that you say? Dishonest, I say. What's the matter with you? Charging money to see him buried alive. What? I ought to know. I helped you lift him in. Leave the carnival, sir. Leave here immediately. That man ain't buried alive. He's dead. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mrs. Kent. This is Professor Vincent. I got your message. First chance I've had to call you. Oh, Professor, I'm so glad you did. Uh, what's on your mind? How is Roger? I keep telling you he's all right. Now you must stop this nonsense. Well, it's been three days since he was buried, and he just lies there so still. Oh, if I could only talk to him. Mrs. Kent. I called down to him, but he never moves or opens his eyes. And after all this time... I know something is wrong. Roger wouldn't let me worry like this. He'd at least look up and smile if he could. How many times must I repeat he is hypnotized? We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. Oh, just a moment, Professor. The radio... The sheriff's office has just confirmed the whereabouts of the homicidal maniac who escaped from the state asylum three days ago. This dangerous killer who calls himself Dr. Vardmore is now known to be in the immediate vicinity of Randolph. Everyone is cautioned against walking alone on the streets after dark. If you plan to attend the carnival, kindly do so with friends and leave the carnival in the company of others. Report all suspicious persons. We return you now to your regular program. Did, did you hear that on the radio? Uh, yes, yes, I did. Oh, Professor, I'm terribly afraid. I don't want Roger alone down there with this, this madman, Lou. Please, Professor, dig Roger up tonight. Mrs. Kent, we made a bargain. A business proposition. Kindly stay in your hotel room and rest. This is the third day. The day after tomorrow, it will be all over for Roger and for you. Pardon me, ma'am. Are you Mrs. Kent? Why, yes. Who are you? I'm the one who helped put your husband in the casket. Well, why are you talking to me? 
I don't know. Just to warn you, I guess. I think your husband's dead. Oh, you horrible, horrible little man. Get away from me. I'll call the police. That's you, Mrs. Kent. Professor Vincent, I'm so glad to see you. A terrible little man. Yes, I heard what he said. Now get hold of yourself and listen to me carefully. This is the fifth night. I want you to go to the hotel and wait until the carnival is over. Tonight is the last showing at Randolph. At 11.30, you take a taxi out here to the lot. I'll meet you. Roger will be ready along with the $500. All right, Professor. Anything you say. Oh, thank God this is about to end. Yes, my dear. It's all about to end. Are you going out, Miss Kent? Yes, clerk. And here's the key to my room. Thank you. I don't think it's wise, though. I mean, you're going out alone. It's after 11 and mighty dark tonight. The police haven't caught the killer yet? No. Funny thing, too. Looks like he'll have to leave a fresh trail. You know, kill somebody so they'll have more to go on. Now, why don't you take someone with you? Oh, I'll be all right. I'm meeting Professor Vincent at the carnival lot. This is the night they released my husband. I see. Do you know the professor? Oh, yes, I do. Well, he's the one who hypnotized Mr. Kent. No. Professor Vincent didn't. What? Professor got sick five days ago. Got sick? Well, then... And who was Professor Vincent at the carnival? I don't know. Somebody who took his place, I guess. Here you are, driver. Thank you. Professor Vincent! It's so dark! Where are you? That's strange. I'm sure the carnival was on this vacant lot, but now there's nothing. Just a few old papers blowing in the wind. Why did I let that cab leave? Light in sight. Those trees around the lot. What if... If the killer were hiding there? Oh. The pace Roger was there. It was... In this direction. This way. Maybe I can find it. My grandma will be soft. But in fact, I might be through the hole. It must be right around here. Oh, oh, oh. Where is it? Oh, what... What's this? Uh, um, a mouse? Ma- uh, mouse! Ah! No, 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 no. Oh, they can't do that. They went away and left you buried. Oh, Roger, Roger, Roger. I'll get you out, honey. Oh, my darling, I'll help you. I'll dig, I'll dig, I'll dig. I'll dig, I'll dig, I'll dig. <laughs> is watching me from those trees. I saw it move. I could get out of here. I'll be back, Roger. There's no night filling station five blocks away. Maybe I can make it there. Oh, oh, it moved again. There is someone out there. Roger, Roger, is, is that you? No, it's coming after me. It's, it's too big for Roger. I, I don't know what it is. It's gaining, it's gaining on me. I can't, I can't let it catch me. No, no, no! Mrs. Kent, calm yourself, please. Who, who are you? Don't you know? I'm Professor Vincent. I was waiting for you. Now, come with me to my trailer. No, you're not Professor Vincent. So, you guessed. Who are you? There's nothing to be alarmed about. You're in safe hands at last. I am Victor. Dr. Victor Vardmore. Hmm. Not been asleep, I guess. Hmm. Legs being cramped. Mind's foggy. Can't remember what happened. <sighs> Sue, where are you? Dark. It's black. Must be night. Quiet. Not a sound. I could only remember. 
Thinking back. Mm, smells damp, like fresh earth. Where am I? Got to get up and stretch my leg. No room to... St- Wait a minute. There was this carnival. Professor Vincent. Oh, it's beginning to come back now. I was hypnotized and put in a casket. Buried for five days, yeah. Yeah, it's clear now. <laughs> Time's up, yeah. They're going to dig me up now. Boy, the deep did not expel that old boy put me in. I'm glad it's over. Okay, Professor, you can bring me up now. <laughs> hmm. I guess he stepped away from the shaft. Shaft? Where's the shaft? What? It's supposed to be over my... Over my head here, so I can see up. Can't see a thing. Cloth line, coffin lid, where shaft should be. What's going on here? I'd, I'd like to get out, Professor. Possible they went away and left me buried alive. Oh, no. And I, Professor! Sue! Help! I'm buried alive! Good Lord. Help! Get out. Help me, somebody! Don't leave me down here to die! Help! Push! Harder! More! No use. Oh, but... Help! I'm gonna die. You let me here to die. Can't call for help. Nobody hear me. Part of the left. There's nothing up there but vacant lot, edge of town. Somebody came back. How could he tell I was down here, Barrett? Oh, God, don't let this happen to me, please. Help me, save me, God. Don't let this happen. I don't want to die. Roger. <laughs> uh, uh, Roger. I'm doing things. <laughs> this is Professor Vincent. Now, listen carefully. Where are you? Get me out of here. Don't fret. Your oxygen supply won't last much longer. Oxygen? You're buried alive, Roger. And I'm not coming back for you. Not going back? I'm leaving you buried there. Oh, Professor, I'll kill you. <laughs> oh, Roger, tell me how. I'll kill you. Don't excite yourself any further. Or the oxygen pellet won't sustain your lungs. You are hearing my voice in a small, shortwave receiver and transmitter near your head. I am talking to you from my trailer about a block from you. Sue is with me, Roger. I want you to listen very, very carefully. Sue, there. Go ahead, Sue. Tell him. Oh, Roger, are you all right? Yes. What's he doing with you? Please do as he says, darling. He's not the real professor. He's that escaped madman from the asylum, Dr. Vardmore. He's crazy, Sue. Please, darling, we have no choice. Please, quick. Listen to me. One move like that and I will kill you both. I have gone to a lot of trouble to set up my final demonstration. What are you going to do? I am going to try personality transference. We have the required situation. A man buried alive in mortal fear of death. And the woman he loves who will do anything to save him. If we do, as you say, what then? I will release the two of you. And... We don't. You have just enough oxygen for just a few more minutes. I see. Hurry, Dr. Vodmer. Get it over with. Now, Roger. I want you to think about Sue. Sue, you about Roger. Each imagine he is the other. Roger, you are standing beside me in the trailer. Sue, you are lying down there in the casket. No! Cooperate and I will free you. It's your only way out of that grave. And Sue? Yes, and she in yours. Do it, darling. It's our only chance. He's not Sue. That's enough. One more refusal, and I'll turn off the shortwave transmitter and leave you in your dark world forever. Now, Roger. Imagine you are Sue, standing here. Sue, you concentrate on being Roger in the casket. Think. Put everything else out of your minds. I have it. Repeat something you both know. Say the 23rd Psalm. Here we go now. Start with me. 
the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table. just heard Macabre, a special Far East Network presentation. In our cast were John Buey as Professor Vincent, Mitzi Hennessy as Sue, William Verdier as Roger, Milton Radmilovich, Air Force Sergeant Bob Eddy, and Air Force Sergeant Newell Stewart. Technical supervision by Hiroshi Ono. This is Air Force Sergeant Al LePage speaking. Macabre was written and directed by William Verdier. Macabre comes to you each week at this time through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs> <laughs>